it can make the flesh uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. The uncomfortability comes because there's a lack of faith. So Good. we don't want to, it makes the flesh a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And the thing that I thought about today was Elizabeth's husband. Man. When they, when he, he his uh, tongue was stuck to the roof of his mouth yeah. so that he wouldn't say the things that he wanted to say. He yeah. wouldn't call his son what he wanted to call him. Right. Because in every name denotes a nature. So it could have threw off yeah. what God wanted to do. Yeah. And he, he was not really, a man, he wasn't as strong in faith as Abraham was. Right. So he had, had to keep asking the angel questions. Yeah. So we don't even have to keep going around there. Let's just stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth so you don't have to say anything. So that's the same thing that happens with us when the when we speak in the word and we feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. It's because we lack in faith in some areas. Yeah. So what you do, because you use this to your benefit, don't get um, defeated or feel downcast. Use it to your benefit yeah. because it's showing you weak areas in your faith. Yeah. Yeah. So when you begin to speak forth the word, and let's say you're speaking for finances, you feel good. You feel strong. Oh, yeah. The word going forth, you feel like, I'm, I'm believing this thing. But then let's say you get sick yeah. and you got to begin to speak forth your healing. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> so I, 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 I think it's for him. Well, Lord, if, if it's your will. Yeah. No, you got to know it's his will. You got to speak that word today. And so if you find out that you had an area of your life and you feel that it's kind of making the flesh a little bit uncomfortable, because the when you begin to speak forth the word, it'll make the flesh uncomfortable and it'll fight your mind sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's not used to it. Right, right. It's not used to it. So you take note. And as you begin to look at the things in your life and you begin to see the places that feel a little funny, the weak, the flesh want to get a little weird on you, mm -hmm. you write it down. Yeah. And then what you do is you get your word out and you begin to go through scripture yeah, and find everything that applies yeah. to what it is you feel funny about and you keep hitting that sucker and hitting that sucker and hitting that sucker. Yeah. Because what it begins to show you is that place needs to be fortified. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have some areas that's strong and some areas that's a little weak yeah. and it's okay. But you got to begin to get that word and begin to speak it forth and get that area strong. Yeah. You know, there's a scripture that talks about that we have a two-edged sword in our hand mm -hmm. to execute the judgment that is written. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at something, and one of the things that it was saying that in Roman times they had swords, and they would wield their swords. And they had two different types of swords. Yeah. One yeah. sword, it had a sharp edge, one edge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there was another sword that had two edges. Right. Well, the worst that we had a sword with two edges. Yeah. So let's talk about two edges for a second. <laughs> now, when they had the sword with the one edge, you have to be pretty skillful for that one yes. in mm -hmm. order to take your enemy out. Yeah. Because if you didn't swing it just right, yeah. you'll make him stagger, but he's going to get up and come at you again. Yeah. So if you take the two-edged sword, which is God speaking, and you speaking, because you're that second edge, and you begin to swing that thing right, you kill your enemy, and it can get up. It actually says that that's the sword with the two edges, it annihilated, annihilated the enemy so that he didn't come back at you. And I think sometimes, we have the one edge, yeah. and we swing it like this. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think God uh, said, yeah, I think it's thoughts of me are yeah. peace and not evil. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing much. You might make him. Yeah. And even he gets to where he like, really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because he, he going to keep coming back. And so you begin to take the, take the word and you begin to speak it forth out of your mouth. Because remember I said we, we were created with a creative power on the inside of us. Yes. And every word that we're speaking, we're forming something. Right. And that's why Zechariah couldn't name, name John right. because God wanted him to have a totally different nature. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And God couldn't lose his mouth until it was time. Yes. And so God will lose some of our mouth when we get the faith to believe, because if you don't have faith, you ain't going to release nothing. Amen. Yeah. So you'll, you'll find that your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth because you don't have the faith to receive yes. to release it. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's find out where we get. <laughs> and so when you're feeling uncomfortable and you're wondering if God is going to do it, I'm going to look like a fool, I'm going to feel like a fool, trust me. We look like a fool and act like a fool for a lot less. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so then faith comes by hearing and hearing from the 
word of God, which is through repetition. Hearing and hearing the word of God, faith comes, which allows the word to get set in your heart and fortify the areas that are weak and soft. Yes. You all can go to, well, you don't really have to, because I can tell you, but you can write it down. Ezekiel 12 and 25. It says, For I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed, for in your days I will speak the word and I will perform it. Come on. So it's not about you. It's not about your word. Yeah. It's not about your ability. Mm -hmm. It is solely based, based on him. Because he said I so many times in that scripture yeah. to let you know it's all yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. So you are his amen corner. Amen. He said it. Yes. You agree and you release it. Oh. And when you release it, what you're saying is, God, I'm aligning myself with you. Yeah. I agree what you said. Yeah. Uh, what you said was good. Yeah. And let, let's let this word go forth so we can accomplish it. And it said that no longer will it be postponed. It said that while we're yet speaking, he's answering. So as we're releasing the word, it's already going about doing what it needs to do. Amen. It says that man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We are not just speaking of, of, about a written word, but we're also talking about a, a proceeding word, yeah. which is a word that he birthed in your spirit. Yeah. Because you can take your Bible throughout your house and you can begin to decree just reading. Yeah. But then sometimes God want to bypass this and it's still based on this, right. still yeah. scripture based. Right. Come on. And he began to deposit things, maybe concerning the situation you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to begin to speak to that thing. Yeah. So when we're talking about a preceding word, we're talking about a word that he birthed in your spirit that he wants you to begin to speak for. Yeah. Because we are a prophetic house. And we know God deal, still speaks today. Amen. And we wait on the words that come from his mouth Amen. that it might burn in our hearts and we release it into the earth. Amen. So we set our tongues in this house as a, re as a pen of a ready writer, Amen. ready to declare the things that has been spoken into our spirit. And then he said to go to the top of the place, go to the top of the mountain, come and on. begin to decree yep. the thing that I placed in your spirit. Yep. That when you come in here and you come to service, you want to go back and you want to begin to decree, because that's a proceeding word. Yeah. It's coming from here, it's scripture-based, mm -hmm. but it is a proceeding word. Yes. It's what God is speaking to us right now. Mm -hmm. So you want to begin to go and decree the things that you've seen and things that you heard from this place, not just in your private time, but you uh -oh. want to decree the things that he said. So if you hear um, God wants us to go back to calling him Lord, I mean, whatever you hear, you begin to take that and you begin to decree it. Because it's connected to your faith. It's connected yeah, to good. what was being taught in the house. And it begins to get in your spirit. Yeah. Because faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear it and hear it and hear it, it begins to take form on the inside of you. We are called to call things that are not as though they were. We have within us an ability to call order out of chaos, light out of darkness, and call crooked things to be made straight. Yeah. We are people that are called to walk by faith and not by sight. In, sp in spite of what things are looking like, keep speaking, keep declaring his will into whatever si your situation is. When things come up against you, declare the word of the Lord. He said he will speak and he will perform in your day. When we decree a thing, we are pronouncing to the powers of 